So the limits of acceptable change is an instrument that was first used in the management of protected natural areas. Um, it was created, it started by George Stanky and, David, and Robert Cole, and is the management tool that considers changes and transformations in natural protective areas, establishes limits for them, monitors and guides the transformation process while preserving identity and local values. It has been applied in the recent years for the management of urban historic sites with tourist influx in the development of strategic plans to support sustainable development. Um, the limit of susceptible change is based on an inventory of resources and opportunities and delineates indicators uh, to, in order to establish standards of susceptible change. It proposes alternatives for each resource defines the implementation of proposals, tracking them, cons considering changes and influences, and integrating them in a participatory process. In the, recent, in the recent years, it has been used for the management of urban historic sites in the development of strategic plans to support sustainable development, taking into consideration relevant international standards for the protection of urban heritage. So the limits of acceptable change is a process it begins with uh, identifying issues and concerns. It defines and describes the opportunity for each zones that it's been defined. It um, goes uh, from a zoning and also for a, after the identification of issues and concerns. It selects indicators of resource and social conditions, an inventory of existing resources and social conditions, specifying measurable standards for their research for the research and social indicators selected, and also the alternative for each group, for each zones of applications. It identifies also the management actions for each alternative, and of course, this is a process, like uh, then come the evaluation, the selection of a preferred alternative, and the implementation, and it's a circle. So it, it's, it's a process, circular process. Um, so um, my case is based in Ilia de Mozambique, uh, Mozambique island of Mozambique. Island of, island of Mozambique is uh, situated in Mozambique, in the north of Mozambique, um, in, the, in the ocean along the Mozambique Channel, and in the Bay of Mosuril, and belongs to the province of Nampula, northern Mozambique. The district continental zone is 225 square kilometers, but the island is a tiny island, it's one square kilometer that had 17,000 inhabitants. A little bit about the history of uh, the island. Um, the island was uh, um, in, um, uh, before um, the Portuguese, because the uh, uh, island of Mozambique was a Portuguese colony, was part of the Swahili culture, of the Swahili uh, trade routes. So it was a, a content, um, connected with Lumbo, with Zanzibar, and uh, Island of Mozambique, where one of, uh, they were one of the most important trading ports of gold and ivory from the Arabs. In the uh, um, 1015-1685, it was the center of the Portuguese colonial power. They overtook the power from the Arabs, and um, also the trade. Uh, so the city is, all, all is, what is in, in red is how the city was uh, uh, constructed and evolved. So you see in the first one, the northern of the, city, of the, of the island, you have uh, the, um, the fortress of uh, um, San Sebastian and some of the most important buildings appearing in 1600. Um, it begins, uh, it is, um, evolved to a, a very important slave trading center during the, the Portuguese colony and also the city, um, sorry, and uh, the city began to expand uh, in, the north, in the north part. The, the, in the north part there were all the, the trading stations, uh, some um, economic uh, infrastructure, and uh, some administrative infrastructure, the, where the Portuguese, the colons, used to live. The, in the local people, they were um, 
at the beginning very few in this area, but they were not uh, supposed to occupy the north area. So they were always on the, on the periphery of this area, still on the north. Um, well, the city continued to evolve and, and, uh, evolve and growing to the south, and uh, the paliotas, the paliotas are the, the houses of the local uh, people, uh, were um, supposed to be only um, uh, settled on the Contra Costa, this, and on the south. Um, well, the city were uh, evolving, but also diminished its importance when the capital moved to the south. The capital moved to the south uh, of the country because um, Lorenzo Marquez was very near from, um, from South Africa, so the capital of all the, the big province, it was the province of Mozambique, went to the south. And, uh, oh, but the city still um, um, grew. And uh, the Makuti town, that's, uh, this is located here in the, in the south part, of the, of the island is mostly built in 99% with these paliotas, with this local architecture, with this local uh, traditional architecture with um, traditional techniques and traditional materials. Um, well, the, after this, the district it, uh, moved to Nampula, the harbor moved to Nakala, to, to a, uh, a port in the north, who was more, more um, uh, um, it was easy to maneuver with the big, uh, big uh, um, ships, and the city fell into abandon and decay. Um, in that, in this, it's in this time, I'm sorry, that um, there was um, uh, the idea to really to separate the city in two. Uh, the locals were not supposed to settle on the north part of the, of the, of the island. And where is here, the, where was, was built uh, the, the big hospital, an incredible hospital, big ho hospital, did the, uh, from here was the separation between the Makuti city and the stone city. So it, the names are because in the north, it was all, all the construction was with limestone. And in the south, the Makuti, the Makuti town, the Makuti city was, were only local materials. So this line, uh, this line who was a, a part of a regu uh, regulation, really divided the city, visual and um, also social. And 1975 was the independence, and it was a big exodus from all uh, col uh, colons. All the Portuguese uh, uh, were compelled to leave the country. And um, the city um, began to have new other, other type of uh, the stone city. Began, began to, to have some people from the Makuti town that went to to, uh, to the uh, stone buildings uh, from, the, from the stone town. But not all of them, because some of the buildings, some of the most important buildings were for the government. And uh, the people didn't know how to, how, to, um, how to maintain these buildings. And it was um, not so easy. It was very, also very, uh, um, it was not a financial possible to maintain the buildings. So the people, most of the people prefer to stay at the Makuti town. And nowadays there is, a, this is one neighborhood, the, uh, the museum, called Museum, and because also of her characteristics. And this is the other part of the city, the two thirds of the city that belongs to the Makuti town, where are seven neighborhoods there. That is very dense. Uh, but it's very alive. Uh, this is the fortress of San Sebastian, the, the one of, of, uh, in the north. So you have a uh, little bit of the idea how incredibly beautiful is the island. Uh, in 1990, 1991 was the declaration of UNESCO World Heritage Site under Criterion 4 as an out outstanding example of architecture in which local traditions, Portuguese influences, and 
to a somewhat lesser extent, Indian and Arab influences are all interwoven. Also under criterion six, considered to bear important witness to the establishment and development of the Portuguese maritime routes between Western Europe and the Indian subcontinent and tens all of Asia. So currently, what happens currently? The built heritage on the island suffers from the loss of some of the characteristics which, was, uh, which it was designated world heritage and sits its integrity threatened. Transformation processes of heritage sites are exposed to dynamic social, political, cultural, and environmental changes, and so it also in Mozambique Island. The stone town has a population of 20,000 of the population is in the stone town. It's mostly of limestone construction, government, government buildings. It is a um, representative uh, colonial architecture, colonial trading settlement was before. There is the place where services and infra infrastructure are, like little hotels and hostels. But there is also the problems of now of gentrification. And most of the tourism is more tourism heritage. And it gives you the feeling that you are transported in the past or that is something static. On the other hand, we have the Makuti town where the 80% of the population lives. And it is constructed with uh, uh, ancient techniques also, but uh, with reed and palm leaves and mangrove roots. The traditional architecture that had also um, influences of a Swahili for the, for the roofs, for example. Um, now it's also very mixed with vernacular architecture, Las Casas Aventuina, there are some new architecture that was de de evolving, still evolving. It's very dense, it has many sanitation problems, and it, sometimes it's described from picturesque, from picturesque to slam. Uh, there are some tourism, cultural tourism initiatives, and the idea is that you are, how you feel like living in the present, and it's a very dynamic in, con in contrast with the, the stone town. Um, so these are some of the impressions of the stone town. So we have, this is the, the big hospital. It has now been renewed some kind of it. And this is the, here is the UNESCO office in front of a, a plaza. And some buildings have been renewed, but some of them are not. And when you walk through the city, you have the idea that you are like kind of in a museum. It's very, it's very static, it's very beautiful, it's amazing. All the views that you have from, from from the buildings to the sea, because the sea is a wonderful Indian Ocean, and it's incredible. But it's the idea that you are in some place, uh, like a magical place, or like a museum. On the other hand, when you visit the Makuti town, you have the impression that the people are here, really living, that there is something really happening. And uh, you can see, for example, these roofs, these uh, in Swahili roofs, the techniques of the two, the two um, columns sustaining the whole, the whole uh, roof, and the way there are the, also the, the, um, the walls built, and all this uh, in, uh, organic material in, in the construction, and also very near. Um, yes. This is uh, some impressions of the Makuti town. It's, it's very dense. About these transformations and changes. The stone town have been changed. It's changing also. Uh, most of the representative buildings became government property after independence in the process of nationalization. Um, all the buildings were nationalized. All the houses were nationalized. Um, and the people could have the right to use some of them or not, but they, they, they would rather, they won't belong to a person, to a single person. It's property of the state. Uh, there is a lot of lack of maintenance uh, and it, uh, you can see more decay in abandonment because of the lack of funds. There is no, we are talking about Mozambique and um, 
it's um, the lack of funds for this kind of uh, uh, revitalization or so rehab rehabilitation it's, it's not um, uh, possible. Uh, some of them, some of the buildings were sold to private and foreign buyers and they become holiday homes. And some of the owners have introduced changes in the morphology. They were not supposed to change, but they did. Uh, they were, uh, however, uh, it had been some conservation action taken, for example, in the fortress of San Sebastian, the, the, the fortress that I have shown with the long, with a nice view. Well, conservation is very difficult because uh, the administration of the real estate, uh, the cadastre, um, for example, uh, is shared between several institutions at different hierarchical levels and it is not really easy to know who belongs the building. And uh, this thing, it says, hinders an efficient and transparent management also. It's not only a question of, of uh, rehabilitation or, of con or conservation. The transformations um, in the Makuti town. The Makuti town, uh, if we don't, we have, to, you have, we have to remember that it was born under restrictions. Uh, the idea was uh, the exclusion of the population to this part of the, of the city, of the, of the island. Um, the, the locals had to, buy, to build with locally available materials but because they were not supposed to use um, a lime or limestone to build at the beginning. Um, there are uh, the, the, the walls, for example, has, um, had a, la a lifespan not higher than 20 years, and the roofs need more renewal because it's an organic, it's an organic construction. Uh, for example, in 1852, the paliotos were not allowed in the stone town. They had to move. They had to be only in the Contra Costa, as I said, and uh, that was a restriction. In 1984, they were compelled to renew the roof with uh, tiles, sink, sink lead, sl uh, slate, or felt. They were not supposed to be the way they, they were. Um, and then, since the UNESCO declaration, transformations are challenged. Because the people see this as more restrictions. Uh, some of them said, we are not, not allowing for the same modern comforts as the conventional houses seen in Maputo and Ambula. Sink sheets is how you do things nowadays, or this is, the, this is how the people think, that they want to, to change this, uh, the houses. And it is all, so it's very contested. Um, so that some, many changes have been introduced. And um, for example, some, some houses are, has still some of the, of the roofs, but maybe the, the walls are changed. The walls are now in cement blocks or some not only not so nice sustainable architecture. And uh, what about this, um, these things, these transformations, these changes? We have the approach from the recommendation of the historic urban landscapes that is based on the recognition of urban heritage as a social, economic, and cultural asset of historic cities and considers the dynamic nature of cities while promoting their development. We have also another thought. Living, living in historic cities have a constant need for adaptation and recognition of the life cycles, the expansion of interrelationships inter between groups and interests, which requires negotiation and the changing notions of what is to be considered heritage with approaches for recognition and inclusion. If we, um, uh, as I said, I was working with the tourism planning and to regional planning, and then I found the, the lack, this, this uh, uh, instrument. Uh, what about the other urban planning instruments that we also use? I think that lack is very strongly related with urban planning because both are management instruments, both are working on the same field, both are dynamic cyclical process, and they are based on the need of adapting and considering transformations and changes, considering social, economic, and environmental aspects. 
both of them can share methodology, methodologies. For example, the zoning for this for this finding use, uh, and all of the many participation approaches that there are. Also, lack could support and enhance the development of urban plans based on the decentralization policies. In Mozambique, we have uh, till um, 2007 the urban planning instrument is a lei de ordenamento do territorio um, to uh, lay of uh, uh, territory planning and uh, at the municipal levels we have the land use plans, the general and partial plans and the detailed plans and the municipalities in this process of decentralization they are compelled to uh, produce these plans and uh, these plans is also um, um, the participatory um, issue is inside of these instruments so the issue of acceptability for lack, for example, is a social phenomenon, and therefore stakeholder involvement is essential. And then we have the lack process, as well as the land planning, are built on active city participation in the overall process of decision making. We have in the uh, Mozambican law says public participation of citizens, local communities and legal persons, public and private must be guaranteed through, throughout the preparation, execution, modification, and review of spatial planning instruments. So, um, I think, um, well, um, the instrument, the lack, the instrument is um, questioning transformations. And it's also questioning identity. And uh, it's a process that reinforces and informs identity, respecting the necessities of change and dynamics and giving guiding ch changes for sustainability. Uh, what would be this acceptable changes for the stone town? Maybe following the heritage conservation patterns, but um, uh, and based on also on tourism heritage needs, because we have also the tourism uh, side that we don't have to forget there. Uh, but uh, maybe it was more of the management of conservation. And for the acceptable changes for Makuti town, I guess it would be like, the first thing is was improving livelihood conditions because people don't want longer to live on the, on the traditional, uh, traditional houses or um, they will, um, um, it will be interesting, it will be very important to, uh, uh, to, um, to talk about the, 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 this kind of architecture. What does it, uh, um, the, 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 good, the good things that the traditional architecture can, can um, Yes, because uh, um, the Makuti, um, Makuti house has um, uh, so many good qualities for uh, environmental qualities, because with a with a sink sheet, it's impossible to 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 be inside of the house. There are many things that change, but the change should be driven in a sustainable way, in a way that said, okay, we don't need, we don't want this. We want to evolve to something else. But this uh, new architecture, this new ho who I am, must be in a way that I also can uh, live proper property properly. Like, so uh, it will need also the, the community participations and the many methodologies that they are um, developed. Uh, and the change will be the changes of uh, the challenges will be the management of transformations. So. Um, I put heritage, it's dynamic and be recreated. Well, and that's, thank you so much for sharing this.